Hello everyone, welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Uh, this one I think is going to be really exciting because I've already done the spirit box, which is something new. Usually I don't get to hear the spirit box before you guys do. And I will tell you, it is super creepy. Probably the scariest one that I've ever got. I'm glad that I didn't hear all the stuff at the beginning of it. Well, while it was happening, because I would have freaked out. So I waited, of course, before I, you know, I didn't guess on anything. I waited until I had my professional review it. And yeah, it's scary. Now, I will tell you right now, I actually am back in my office and I'm recording. And you're going to hear kind of a loud noise. And I apologize. That's not spirits or anything behind you um, or behind me or anything like that that I hope Unless they come through and talk and I'll let you know. But I do actually have a bearded dragon and for whatever reason today, he has seen his reflection and he is not a happy bearded dragon. Uh, I'll show you guys a picture of him. His name is Monster. I actually have two. The other one is named Hermes. Um, but Monster's just kind of going crazy today. So I, I'm sorry for all the uh, scratching noises that you're going to hear. It's a little crazy. <laughs> And it might be crazy through this part of the video, but there's actually two parts. There's the part where we record this part in the introduction. I'm going to talk a little bit about Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker Killer. And that is not someone that when I do a spirit box, I'm going to sit in my house and invite over. Because I've done that before, being stupid, when I very first started doing all these spirit box sessions. And I've had a lot of problems. Let's just put it that way. I've had a lot of problems with some creepy stuff in my house. So I actually went out to a cemetery where I know that there's, I know a demon lives in this cemetery. Really crazy place. And that's where I did the spirit box session at. But it got wild. It was, it's just, it's a crazy spirit box. It's really creepy. But before we get into all that, let's start with the Night Stalker. And his name is Richard Ramirez. And let's talk about something different that I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about, which really bugged me about him. On YouTube, someone did a Was He Born a Killer uh, type video. And I don't know. I You know, I don't. I don't really think babies can be born serial killers. I, I Maybe I need to do some more research. If you guys know a serial killer that you think was just from day one, he was born that way. Uh, maybe Ted Bundy, but Ted Bundy had a head injury, I believe, when he was really young. And that's what they blamed on that, you know, but, but I don't know. But anyway, Richard Ramirez, though, I think it's the old nature versus nurture story. Was he born this way? Could have been. Was he made this way? I, I'm going to go, I'm going to have to side with made this way. And I'm going to tell you guys why. We're going to go through some of that stuff and then we'll get into the spirit box session, okay? So I want to talk about him. He was born, whether it was good or evil, on February 29th, 1960. He was born in El Paso, Texas. He was born in a larger family. He was the youngest child of five. And yeah, when he was two years old, he was hit in the head by a piece of furniture. Now, I tried to find more details out about this, about, I mean, how does your two-year-old get knocked in the head by the furniture? Anyway, that's all I could find on that. I did find out, though, when he was five years old, he was actually hit in the head with a swing to so hard that it actually knocked him unconscious. So now we've got two young child head injuries that could have started kicking this off. And then we're going to see a whole bunch of weird circumstances that I think really made Richard Ramirez, Richard Ramirez. Now, from five years old to ten years old, everyone said his neighbors, uh, his school friends said what a great kid he was. He was so nice and kind and funny, just like regular normal kid. Okay, didn't see anything really pop out or anything really creepy about him. Nothing. So I don't think he was born this way. I'll tell you though, what happened and started happening at 10 years old and up, I think that's where we're going to find our answer. Now at 10 years old, he had this cousin named Mike, and his real name was Miguel, but Miguel went by the name Mike. Mike was the United States Army Green Beret in Vietnam, and Mike was a sick, twisted puppy dog, I will tell you that. He would commit these horrible war crimes really in Vietnam, like rape, murder, and he would decapitate the people that he murdered. And he took pictures of all this. 
And not only was he sick enough, one, to do it, two, to take pictures, but then he would bring, he brought those pictures home and he showed Richard this. And here's little Richard, a 10 year old boy with his older cousin who's in the military that he completely looks up to, showing him that this is not only okay, but that this is really cool. Check this out, little Richie. You know, and on top of that, Mike also got him started on drugs. The final part of the Mike story is while Richard was with Mike, when he was still a little kid, right? I mean, we're talking 10, 11, 12 year old kid right now, okay? Mike actually shot and killed his wife. He shot her in the face. And not only did he do that, he did it in front of Richie. You know, as just disturbing as that is, the fact that you would do that in front of a child, I, I just don't know. And Mike was so twisted that he didn't even end up in jail, which is ridiculous, but he ended up going to a psych ward for four years. Okay, so at least Mike gets out of the picture. He needed out of the picture, okay? But it gets worse for poor little Richie Ramirez because he goes and he stays with his sister and his sister's husband. Now, his sister's husband is a peeping Tom, okay? And not only is he a peeping Tom, but he decides that he should take little Richie out with him while he goes and is a peeping Tom. Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing about Mike. So, not only did Mike show him all these pictures, but Mike also taught him things like how to stalk people, how to kill people, why are you teaching a 10 year old this kind of stuff? Okay, so now we've got this guy who's done all these horrible, horrible crimes and he's, and someone that Richie looks up to and is showing this to him. And then we have this other man who's a peeping Tom and is taking this little kid out to be a peeping Tom with him. Now we're gonna get into the father thing because I watched a Netflix show about Richard Ramirez and they were talking about, oh, how he found solace and going and hanging out in the cemetery at night and staying the night in the cemetery. But what they didn't mention is that the reason that he liked the cemetery was he had gotten so used to being there because the way that his abusive father would punish him if his father didn't like something he had done is his father would actually take this little kid, and we're talking like six, seven, eight years old, right? Take this little kid out to the cemetery and tie him up in the cemetery and leave him there for the entire night. His father is sick. His cousin is sick and twisted. And his sister's husband is sick and twisted. And these are the male role models that he had. Now, I am not defending this guy because, again, the spirit box session that I did, creepy right? Really creepy. Talks about Satan. Talks about a whole bunch of not good stuff. You guys are going to hear it here in a minute. I'm not defending this guy. But I'm just saying, I wonder, was he born this way or was he made this way? There's a lot of stuff it seems like that could be made this way. So now that we're done with the whole Peeping Tom story and got that out of the way, he's about ninth grade, 10th grade in high school at this time, which is about 14, 15 years old, okay? And he starts getting into heavy drugs at this point. Starts getting into things like hallucinogenic drugs. He starts becoming a Satanist and believing in Satan and worshiping Satan. And we all know he did a whole bunch of creepy stuff like that. Well, he drops out of school. And what do you have to do when you drop out of school? You gotta get a job. So he gets a job at a Holiday Inn. And everyone at this point knew him as the thief. He would steal stuff. Not only would he steal stuff from his neighbors, but now he had this new job and he would steal stuff from the hotel rooms that he was working in. And one room he went into, there was this woman. He decided that he could try to assault her. And he tried to, but her husband came in and caught him and basically beat him up, which is wonderful. And he needed it but they didn't press charges. And I think this is still part of the part of making a killer here. They didn't press charges because they were tourists and they didn't want to come back in town and press charges. I think possibly if he had been punished for his possibly very first act that he had done, that maybe some of this could be stopped. But they didn't want to press charges because they just didn't want to come back in town and have to deal with all that. And I'm like, okay, well, where is the state of Texas at this point? Why isn't the state pressing charges? Why isn't someone doing something? 
but nothing gets done. So after this, of course, embarrassing incident for him, he decides later that he's going to move to California. And at 22 years old, he moves to California. And first he moves to San Francisco. Now he's staying at a hotel. And at this hotel, there's a nine year old little girl named, I gotta look at this to get this right. Mi Leung, Li Leung, it's M-E-I is her first name, and L-E-U-N-G, so I apologize that I pronounced that wrong. But there's this little girl, and she was found dead in the basement of that hotel. There has been speculation as to whether it was his fault. His wife, that he married while he was in prison, actually said that he admitted to killing this little girl, and that's why uh, she decided to leave him. You know, she met him after he had been in prison with all the other horrible crimes, but the nine-year-old was just too much and she just drew the line there. So she's just as twisted as he is. I wanted to ask that question and see, did he or will he admit to killing this little girl now that he has passed on? That's that's definitely one to ask the spirits. Um, after San Francisco, he moved to the creepy, creepy haunted Cecil Hotel. And there was just a video put out about the Cecil Hotel. And the Cecil Hotel, which I think very haunted, very haunted. I've never been there, but I've heard a lot of people say that it's haunted. I would love to go there, except, I don't know, I think I'd probably be a little too scared to go there. I don't know. Maybe one day. We'll see. So the Cecil Hotel, he was paying like $14 a night for, okay? Staying at this hotel. And there was a show called Cecil Hotel on Netflix, and it really talks about another murder of Elisa Lamb. And that has nothing to do with Richard Ramirez. That's just the connection of the Cecil Hotel. But in that documentary about Elisa, they were talking about how when Richard Ramirez was there, he would actually go out, do his killings, then change outside in the alley, take off all his bloody clothes and everything, and walk in this hotel in just his underwear, blood, everything on him, and no one even noticed anything. No one paid attention to him because I guess there's a lot of crazies and stuff that stay at this hotel. Again, why, how, got a lot of questions, I guess you could say. How did no one catch him? So, my point here is, is that, I don't know, I guess it really frustrated when I saw the, saw someone's title about saying, born a killer, or was he born a killer? I think that so much stuff happened in this kid's life. I think he was trained to be a killer. And then, his first couple of crimes that he committed, the first one in the hotel with the lady, the second one, the little nine-year-old girl, and then now going out and his regular crimes, which we're not going to talk about here because we're going to keep it YouTube friendly, but his first set of crimes, no one did anything about. No one charged him. No one, nothing. I mean, except for the husband who, who beat him up once, but, you know, he took a beating and then nothing came out of it. He didn't get help. Nothing. So anyway, I just want to talk to you guys about that. Before we got into a spirit box session with him, it is a very crazy spirit box session. I hope you guys all enjoy it and uh, I'll see you back here in just a minute. Oh, one thing before I let you do the spirit box session. As always, spirit box sessions are really, really loud. And so if you're wearing headphones right now, make sure that you adjust your volume. Another couple of quick things, housekeeping things about my spirit box sessions. Uh, I have two spirit guides. Their names are Ethan and E. You can call them guardian angels. You'll hear their voices in every single one of my videos because without them, I can't do all this. So if you hear me talking to Ethan and E, that's who they are. They're wonderful. Help me do everything here. Oh, I also have a professional who spent 10 years in the United States military and his job was to listen to radio static and find out what people who we didn't get along with were saying through their radio static uh, and pass that up to the big boys. So that's what he did. He reviews most of my spirit box sessions with me and he reviewed this one and helped me get some crazy stuff out of this one. It's, it's pretty amazing. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into the spirit box session. Okay. Okay, Ethan and E, are you here with us? Can you get Richard Ramirez for us, please? Let's see, are the kids creeping out? <gasps> yeah, this is. How do I come here? Can you get Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, for us to come talk to me today? He used to love cemeteries, especially oh, evil ones. Richard, are you 
Are you with Satan now? Richard, say your name if you're here. Richard, if you're really here, get on the spirit box, use this to communicate with me, and I want to know what is carved into your hand that you kept showing the courtroom during your trial. Ethan, can you help him talk better? I only want to talk to Richard Ramirez. Richard, if you're here, you were accused of murdering a nine-year-old little girl named Mi Luing. Luing? I believe her last name was, I'm sure I messed that up. In the hotel where you were staying in the basement. Did you do that? Did you kill her? You guys, you guys can't talk. That was just the kids talking. Are you still on this earth with us? Or are you rotting in hell like you should be? You wanted to be with Satan. Oh, that was creepy. Richard, how many people did you murder? That was creepy. I don't know. That was like a weird growly voice. I don't know. Don't guess. Richard, how many people did you murder? You can tell us now since you're not appealing in the courts anymore. Do you have anything that you want to say to your fans, Richard, as sick as they are? And magnificent and and a god in a way what do you have to say to those people okay Richard we're letting you go I'm letting you go no not holding on one second okay guys see I told you that was creepy right like all the kind of stuff he was saying in court, all the stuff he was saying when he was captured, all the kind of satanic creepy stuff. I'm so glad I didn't do that spirit box session in my house. I just had this feeling to not do that. And like I said, been burned in the past, I guess you could say, uh, with spirit box sessions by doing creepy people or bad people in my house before. So don't do that. But I'm so glad I didn't do it in my house. And even more glad that I did not hear everything at the time because when he said that he's coming home with me, I think I would have freaked out. So yeah, I would have been calling you guys up or like messaging you on YouTube and being like, I'm coming to stay with you. But anyway, we did have a kind of creepy presence in my house after that spirit box session. Nothing I couldn't get rid of, so I got rid of it. Everything's peaceful and calm and quiet here now. So don't worry, I am safe. My family's safe, everyone's doing okay. And yeah, I hope you liked that spirit box session. What did you guys think? I'm really dying to know. What you guys thought about it? Leave me a comment below. 
Tell me what you guys thought. Yeah, let me know. I'm excited to hear from you guys. I hope everyone's doing great, and I love y'all. I will be talking to you soon. Bye. <laughs>